Topic 6.2, DNA replication. Some of the questions we'll be addressing. Why is DNA replication described as semi-conservative? What are the key enzymes involved in DNA replication and what do they do? What's the difference between DNA replication at the leading and lagging strands? What are Okazaki fragments? I'm Mr. W from learn-biology.com, where we believe that if you're really going to learn AP Bio, you've got to interact and get feedback. That's what happens on learn-biology.com. We're so sure of that, that your subscription comes with a money-back guarantee. On a big picture level, describe how DNA replication occurs and what the term semi-conservative means. During DNA replication, a team of enzymes using each strand of the double helix as a template synthesizes new daughter strand. Here's the original strand. Enzymes pull that strand apart and that results in two daughter strands that are each single strands. These single strands serve as a template. And what that means is that nucleotides that are available in the nucleus following the base pairing rules will bind with the exposed strand. A will bind with T, C will bind with G, etc. The result is that each daughter DNA double helix consists of one conserved strand from the parent molecule and another strand that was synthesized anew. In these daughter molecules, one of the strands is this strand. Here we go. The other strand is this strand, whereas these strands over here are new, semi-conservative. One strand is conserved, the other strand is new. You can see that represented here with a kind of color coding where the parent strand has both strands colored red, and you can see in the daughter strands, one strand is red, conserved, one strand is orange, new. That method of replication is known as semi-conservative replication. Describe how DNA replication starts. In the model of DNA replication that we're about to talk about, there's a lot of simplification compared to how the process actually works in nature, but don't worry, this is exactly what you need to know for AP Biology. The process begins when an enzyme called helicase over here at B finds a sequence called the origin of replication that basically says start replicating here and separates the double-stranded DNA as you know, that means breaking the hydrogen bonds that are holding the two strands together. This exposes two single strands and it creates a structure that's called a replication fork. At learn-biology.com, we understand why students struggle with AP Bio. It's a hard course, but we have a plan for your success. Go to learn-biology.com, sign up for a free trial, and complete our interactive tutorials and interactive AP Bio exam reviews. We guarantee you a four or a five on the AP Bio exam. See you on learn-biology.com. Describe the roles of DNA polymerase, primase, and primers in replication. Let's get oriented here before we start. This is a replication fork. This is DNA helicase that's opening up the parent strand, exposing the nucleotides in the two daughter strands. DNA polymerase is this enzyme shown over here and over here. It's the key enzyme involved in creating new DNA. The parent DNA is shown in dark blue. The new DNA that's coming in is represented in light blue. The nucleotides bind based on base pairing rules. DNA polymerase doesn't know which nucleotide should fit. The knowledge is basically in the template strands. So if there is a C over here, then a G will bind. If there's an A over here, then a T will bind. What DNA polymerase does is it binds new nucleotides to the three prime end of a growing strand, and that's a sugar phosphate bond. DNA polymerase has a limitation. It can only add nucleotides to an existing strand. So think of it as an enzyme and it has an active site. Its substrate is the pre-existing strand and the new nucleotide that came in. So to start the process, DNA polymerase needs an RNA primer, a couple of bases of RNA that DNA polymerase can start connecting DNA nucleotides to. Here's the primer shown over here here it's shown and it's 
represented by number four. There's another enzyme that can come to an open replication fork and start laying down that primer, and that's represented here at five. It's called primase. Primase lays down the primer. What role do single strand binding proteins play during replication? The single strand binding proteins are shown at eight, and what they do is they keep the double helix from rewinding so that all of these other enzymes can get into place and carry out replication. How is DNA replication at the leading strand different from replication at the lagging strand? In each replication fork, there's going to be a leading strand and a lagging strand. In the leading strand, which is shown over here at J, DNA replication is relatively continuous because DNA polymerase at G is following the opening replication fork that's being created by helicase over here. In the lagging strand, which is shown at L, DNA polymerase synthesizes in the opposite direction from the opening replication fork. So what you have to imagine is that DNA helicase opens up the helix a little bit, DNA polymerase gets in and starts synthesizing, and then it opens up a little bit more. Well, DNA polymerase can't go in this direction. It can only go in the five to three direction. So that means another DNA polymerase comes in and synthesizes this over here, and yet another. And each time there's a primer. What that means is that on the lagging strand, DNA replication is discontinuous, and it's built from short sequences that are called Okasaki fragments, named after the researchers who discovered that this is how the process works. Describe the roles of DNA polymerase 1 and ligase during DNA replication. DNA polymerase 1, shown over here at K, removes the RNA primers. Here's one over here. Here's a whole bunch over here. And it replaces the RNA with DNA. Another enzyme called DNA ligase is required to finish the process and create the complete daughter strands. What it does is it seals the gaps between fragments with sugar phosphate bonds. Want to learn more? Sign up for a free trial of the website that guarantees your AP Biology success learn-biology.com and watch this next video.